Let's keep going on this mini series that I jovially call, Hey Asul, do I have enough money to retire? So I'm gonna share another hypothetical example. In this case, it's a 65 year old. You know, they haven't saved as much as they were hoping to save for retirement. They've got $250,000. Let's say it's a single person and the question is, Hey Asul, I'm 65. My job is physically demanding. Do I have enough money to retire? All right, let's go for a walk and talk about this. So, you know, it's gonna be tight is, is, is the short answer, right? The good news is we're humans, we're adaptable, uh, and you absolutely can have a good life uh, having saved that much money. Now, it's not necessarily gonna come with a lot of material accruements, uh, but it, it can still be a life filled with adventure and joy uh, and, and satisfaction and fulfillment, right? So just high level, you know, if you do the 4% rule, which is, is just a general rule of thumb, um, you know, that's gonna give you $10,000 a year in retirement. Uh, and if you toss onto that uh, social security, uh, and a lot of Americans just live off of social security. So you're, you're better off than, than, than the folks that are just living off of social security, right? You've got an extra 10,000 a year. The average social security check in America is just under uh, $1,700 a month. Right, so you're gonna have about what, 850 a month um, from uh, your savings if you do the 4% rule, plus you're gonna have the 1700 a month, so it's gonna be about $2,500 a month. So things are gonna be tight, you know. Uh, a lot of people in my, uh, in my comments ask, you know, Asul, what do you think about living in a foreign country? Uh, and you know, if, if you're up for that adventure, that can really help a lot. Uh, there's a lot of really neat countries. I've been fortunate to uh, work remotely from 30 different countries during the pandemic. Um, not all at once, not for the whole two and a half year period, but uh, you know, probably for a six month period in aggregate uh, over the two and a half years uh, of the pandemic. And I can tell you like Southeast Asia, there's some wonderful, wonderful places to live. Quite a bit less expensive than the United States. South America, same thing there. Uh, hopefully you speak some Spanish, uh, is really gonna help you in South America. Uh, Mexico, a lot of Americans retired down in Mexico, and that's gonna be an adventure, right? This isn't, hey, you don't have enough money to retire in, in the US. I think you probably do, right? I mean, again, it depends on what retirement looks like for you, but a lot, a lot of Americans live off of just their social security. So you've, you've got an advantage uh, above and beyond that, and then, you know, states like California, states like New York, um, those can be expensive places to live, but there's, there's other states in the United States. Actually, if you want me to do a video on, you know, states to consider retiring in or countries to consider retiring in, uh, leave me a comment uh, and I'll consider doing that. But, you know, you're gonna have to be a little more strategic maybe than somebody with $500,000 or a million dollars just to make sure your dollar goes as far as it possibly can. Uh, the other thing that can be interesting is, you know, two thirds of Americans consider returning to work in their first three years of retirement, right? Um, and I think for a lot of people actually, returning to work full-time would be a mistake, but doing some part-time work in something that gives them purpose and meaning, that could be really valuable. and. Um, and, and if you've got 250,000 saved and, and you're retiring, uh, that can be something that you think about. You know, is there part-time work that you, you might find interesting and fun? You know, I've, I've, I've shared previously kind of some side hustles, some things that people do part-time in retirement. And some of the more popular ones are like teaching English. Uh, a lot of people think like, you know, if you're gonna teach English uh, to, to somebody in Singapore, um, actually, that's a bad example. Almost everybody in Singapore speaks English. But if you're gonna sp uh, teach English to somebody in Japan, uh, they think, well, I, I've gotta speak Japanese, but that's not the case. You know, the, uh, They don't want you speaking in the, the native language of your student. They want the student to be immersed in, in, in our case, in English. So um, you don't need to speak the foreign language. And you know, those jobs can pay 15 to $30 an hour. Uh, you're typically teaching children uh, and so there's platforms here in the U.S. to match up people that are willing to teach English with parents. Typically, it's parents of, you know, in my example, uh, Japanese parents that want their kids to learn English well. 
uh, one platform, I'm not suggesting this platform, this is not an endorsement, but I have heard of it, uh, mentioned many times, which is VIPkids.com. Uh, so that's, that's one thing to think about doing. The other thing is, you know, let's say you own your house, you know, uh, it, does it make sense to Airbnb a room in your house? Or maybe uh, you rent out your house three months in the summer uh, while you go, uh, you know, on a, an RV trip or something like that. It, it could make sense and you've got the whole kind of gig economy. Um, nowadays, people can rent their cars when they're on a trip and they're not using their car. There's a, there's a website called Turo. So, you know, thinking through, are there some things that you would enjoy doing uh, that you could do um, that could help supplement your income? And really, you know, the goal there is if you can make an extra thousand dollars a month. And I think there's a lot of jobs where you can do that working part time. Um, that would make a big difference. Uh, and every year you don't need to touch on your savings is a year that allows it to grow. Uh, so that can be beneficial as well. So, you know, the short answer with, you know, do you have enough money to retire? The answer is, you know, I don't know your situation, so it depends, right? Uh, but we're human, we're adaptable. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, and I think you can have a lot of adventures. If, uh, if you're married, you know, another question is, what's, what's the strength of your marriage? Because if you end up getting divorced, now, you know, likely I'm not a divorce attorney and none of this is financial advice. This is just things for you to think about uh, as you think about your situation, some, some thoughts that you can do further research on. But, um, you know, if you get divorced in, in, in most states, in most situations, you're gonna split those assets. Uh, so now you each have $125,000, right? It's gonna get tight. Um, and you know, social security is not perfect, but thank goodness that we have that as kind of a, a social safety net for us. And you know, another thing is, uh, in this example, I said you're 65 years old, hypothetically 65 years old. How old is your partner? You know, are you gonna have to uh, get health care for your partner uh, if he or she is not qualified for uh, Medicare yet? And if, if you want to learn about uh, how to qualify uh, for different options for uh, health insurance. I did a video on that up there that's worthwhile looking into. Um, so we talked about health. Um, the other thing is just, you know, keeping physically fit, uh, both uh, so that you can enjoy your retirement, but hopefully then uh, you need fewer uh, medical, uh, you need fewer medical visits, doctor visits, you have fewer health issues. If you enjoyed today's video, I know you're gonna enjoy this video up here that talks about what does the average retiree have in income at 65. And this video down here that talks about five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching, bye bye.